Welcome to Divine Downloads. I'm your host and spiritual mentor, Cassandra Bodzak, and this is the podcast where we show you how to divinely design your life. And this episode is all about sprinkling magic into your day-to-day life by owning your own big witch energy. That's right. That is the title of Semra Haksever's newest book, Big Witch Energy. And Samra will be on the podcast today. I'm so excited to have her and to share the magic and the goodness that is her with you. She's a renowned eclectic witch, celebrated author, and the creative force behind Mama Moon Candles. She's got a profound connection to the mystical realms and artfully weaves magic into her day-to-day life and shows you how you can too. And her unique approach to the craft involves harnessing the potent energies of plants, the moon, symbols, scents, and the subconscious. You are just going to love her. So without further ado, let's dive into Big Witch Energy. Samra, I am so excited to have you on Divine Downloads. It was such a delight meeting you in person in London and getting to work with you and do a spell together. And um, thank you so much for your Big Witch Energy book. I think all of my listeners are going to be just obsessed with this book. It is couldn't come out at a better time, I think, um, at a time where all of us need to kind of rise up and, you know, step into our power and claim our magic. And yeah, thanks for being on the show. And I'm excited to dive into, you know, how we can all activate our big witch energy. (laughs) Oh, thank you so much for having me. (laughs) So can we kick off by you sharing with us, where did your witch journey begin? Did you feel like you always knew you were a witch? Were there moments where it kind of came in? And when was that? Was there like a turning point where you really like own this? And said, yes. you know, I really want to like do spells and get into ritual and like, this is who I am. Yeah, all of that, basically. Um, it's funny because that's a really, you know, that's always a sort of like the first question. When did you realize you were a witch, you know? And it is sort of when I do sort of observe my life, it, I think that I have always been this way. You know, I might not have always used this title, um, but both my grandmothers were very spiritual women. One was Turkish, one was Polish. Um in different ways. My Turkish grandmother read coffee cups and my Polish grandmother was just, you know, she'd see spirits and sort of talk about stuff like that, you know, very superstitious, lots of kind of like little folklore kind of things with pear pips and, you know, shoes facing a certain way and stuff like that. And I think that I never really questioned that so much. And then when I was um, 17, I was looking after a little boy, I was babysitting and his mum was a healer. She was a Reiki healer. And I didn't really know what that was. I know when I got the job, she told me that I got the job because she liked my energy. And I loved that. I thought that just sounded so cool. And it was almost like when she said that, I hadn't heard anybody, you know, this is like 20, I think about 28 years ago. <laughs> and, I, and I think at that point, I hadn't heard anybody in my kind of life talk about oh, energy. You know, it, it's a very now that language is something that we use all the time you know but back then it hadn't been in my vicinity and so I love that she'd said that um I've got good energy and somebody felt it you know and it, and it and it resonated because I realized that I think I've always been reading people's energy as well um and then one night her little boy wouldn't stop crying and she had was I was there to babysit and she was like what's wrong and obviously it was my energy. <laughs> um, I had a broken heart. And so she stayed in and did Reiki. She canceled her appointments and she said, it's time for me. I'm going to stay in tonight. So she did Reiki on me. And it was amazing. It was such a moment. Um, anyway, so then she taught me how to do Reiki. And I was in this group of all this, these women with older, late, older women. You know, I was like 17. So they were all kind of a little bit older healers, you know. And then I went traveling and I think the fact that I knew how to do Reiki was almost, you know, that um, saying your vibe attracts your tribe. Mm -hmm. I think the fact that I had experienced this little bit of spirituality, it kind of opened me for when I went traveling for the people that I met. And I met a lot of very spiritual women. I worked in a cafe with a lot of my lifelong friends, actually, you know, um, that now and um, a lot of the women who worked there were older women, feminists, 
everybody knew about the moon. Everybody would know what, what moon cycle, you know, what phase of the moon we were in. And um, by the, by the way that the customers used to behave, you know, and, um, and I think that that really kind of set me off. So it was around then. So that was like 1920. That was when I started to buy magic books on herbs, oils, you know, manifesting stuff like that. And then that was the full journey. I mean, I'm 46 now. Um, I think I started, I was, so I worked in fashion, but again, when I worked in fashion, I was always giving my clients crystals. I did a lot of bands who did big performances on, you know, big festivals and stuff. I'd always be giving them little bits, crystals mainly. Um, and then um, I did a psychology degree. I actually, I almost, I almost finished it. Um, I didn't like, I just couldn't handle it in the end. And then I'm, I'm too spiritual for the science, for so much science. And then, um, and then I did a comedy, I literally, I was just sort of like, what am I going to do? Me and my best friend basically ran away with the circus. We created a little comedy show that we did for a few years. And, um, you know, I mean, we were always manifesting while we were doing that, um, always making little spells and then, but we weren't making any money really doing our show. And I just started to have a real freak out of what am I going to do? Like, what, what am I going to do? Yeah. <laughs> I'm a terrible employee. I know that much and um, I'm much better working for myself. And so um, I went to Bali and I climbed a volcano and I'm not a volcano climbing woman. I just, you know, the side note is that I held the guide's hand all the way up and I wore the wrong shoes. But I said to my friend when I was climbing it, I was like, right, I'm gonna do something so kind of like out of the ordinary. And when I get to the top, I'm gonna have a vision of what I'm gonna do with my life. And I did, I got to the top and I had this, I got recently before I'd gone, got a book on scent magic. And I just loved the kind of, you know, idea that it was like a scent that you were offering to the spirits. And I guess because of the psychology degree, there was this little bit of kind of like knowing about the hippocampus, you know, and what scent can do to the brain and how it can inspire you or relax you or motivate you or whatever. And so I had this full vision at the top of this volcano and um, the name Mama Moon came to me and everything and I came back down and I went and I yeah we I couldn't believe that the name was so easy and I spent like you know a while just kind of thinking of other names of like I'm gonna do these candles and I'm gonna make magic accessible to everybody like this is the vision like you know magic's been so great in my life I'm just gonna do it and I did and that my intention really sort of like carried through you know of being able to do something to make it accessible um, and then I think it just kind of like, you know, it's that thing with alignment, isn't it? When you're doing something that you're meant to do, every door kind of opens for you. You know, it's quite, yeah. um, you just kind of like end up just going along with it. And it's like, yes, yes, yes. You know, after making sort of my candles being out for about maybe a year or two, um, I got my first book deal, you know, and the big manifestation there was to make magic books that are accessible to everybody. Not like the ones that I've got about a hundred magic books, you know, not like the ones that I had in the nineties and the, you know, noughties. I wanted books that you could just open and, and just go, here's a spell. This is what I'm going to do. You know, yeah. so I guess it has been, uh, sorry, it's a very long winded answer there, but yeah, it's been a long, it just feels like always. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I think it's true. It's like, that's one of those things where, you know, uh, to, for listeners that are kind of coming, you know, on and thinking, and I think in recent years with, you know, even more books coming out around like witches and being, you know, kind of opening up to being a witch and whatnot, I think more people are opening up to it, but I agree with you. I think what happens is really, you know, it's like just a curiosity you know, um, I remember like as early as like, I mean, I was in third grade and formed a coven and, yeah. <laughs> and my mom used to go to used bookstores all the time. Cause she read a lot and she would always look at her like romance books or whatever she was reading. Right. And I would always go to the like spell books. I would always try to find the like oldest little spell book or <laughs> thing. And then like me and my, now I like look at it. I'm like, oh my God, like I was a, such a little child. And we would yep. like, you know, do our makeshift version of it in my bedroom and whatnot. And 
I think that so many of us just have that like natural, there's like a natural pull, like a natural magnetism towards it where, you know, if you're even listening to this podcast, like clearly you're being called to open up. So what would you say um, as someone that has written all these books and has a beautiful, you know, shop where you help people, you know, get clear on, I guess, what they want so that then you can formulate a spell for that. What would you say to someone that's kind of like in that early seeking phase of how can they really start claiming more of their, their witch energy? I think just really sort of recognizing your own power, you know, and recognizing energy, you know, that's really the only thing that this is all about. If you're, you know, if we're into magic and we're talking about this, it's like, if you are, if you're believing in magic, you're believing in energy, you're believing in all of us being energetic beings, you know, and it's, I guess it's just recognizing that this is a faith, you know, it's a faith and it's, and, and all you really have to do in a faith is believe. Yeah. Right? Believe. And you can, you can choose how big or small you want to go with your rituals you know I think that is one of the things about witchcraft I think it's very much like I feel that it's something that's a very modern kind of like feminist sort of you know way to, a faith to choose in a way because you really can choose what works for you and what doesn't you know it's um it's the kind of yeah it's the kind of work the spiritual version of wellness isn't it you know yeah. so like it's just going that little bit deeper if you're into this stuff you're probably into wellness you're probably meditating yoga you know and all this you know kind of stuff and it's just maybe just turning it up that little bit and realizing that there's a spiritual side to it that there's that little bit more and it's just it doesn't have to be so complicated you know it really is just about opening your eyes and seeing everything that surrounds us and I think seeing the magic in all of that is almost enough to just kind of, you know, put you into being into wanting to practice some kind of craft. And what would be like for someone that, let's say someone that has never done a ritual before, hasn't like, you know, done a spell, what do you think would be a good, maybe either starter ritual or starter spell for someone to like, kind of get their feet wet? Is there something that you feel is like, you know, I don't know, maybe even like a daily intention setting ritual or like a spell, just like have a positive day, something that you could recommend that you think would be a, a gentle place for someone to just get their feet wet? I mean, you know, a ritual can be so many things. You could just create a man of, create a, um, a mantra, you know, uh, or an incantation and you just promise yourself that every day that's going to be the first thing that you say when you open your eyes or that you're going to be saying it as you brush your teeth, you know, and just see how the energetic shifts change. You know, just you could leave your house and you could leave the front door and you can say, give me a sign. Give me a sign today that magic is real. Yeah, <laughs> I promise you, you keep your eyes open and you're going to be sent a lot of signs. Yeah. You know? And, it, and that's what it is. It is just about having that connectivity to the energy around you, to, you know, to nature around you. You know, I mean, I'm a city witch. I live in a very built up part of London, you know, but I just have to, there's still trees around or I just have to look up at the sky and see the moon, you know, or see some clouds. And it's like, that's magical enough for me. Yeah. You know, that that is that we're on a planet spinning around in this atmosphere, seeing all of that. It, it can be so back to basics yeah you know? but um but then if you want to go more you know when you then you make a little wish at the beginning of your day you know or you just say send me a sign today universe and you know um I mean it's it really endless my day is kind you know it can be magical from the moment you wake yeah. up to the moment you go to sleep you know there's so many little things you can do that are just everyday things you can you know stir your tea or your coffee and you make sure you do it in a clockwise direction that's bringing good stuff in you know just say a little blessing for all your organs and your blood and your body and your bones you know as you're drinking it to say this is this is the intention I'm sending my body today you know um easy that's nice kind of you know yeah exactly and that's what I think 
you know, for me, I think, you know, the, it's like, there's just like a magical way of living. I like to call it. Right. And so it is like, it's funny because for me, I think just cause it, it's grown and developed with me as I just grew up. Um, I didn't realize how, I don't know, I guess different it was from some people that when I started, you know, getting to the age where I, you know, I would have some more sleepovers with friends and spend a lot of more time with like living by myself and stuff. Yeah. And a lot of my girlfriends, you know, they would, they would just be like, wow, Cass, do you realize that like you do so many, like you have so many little, like intentional little rituals, right? Or I'll be like, okay, like, we're not just making tea, you know, we're like, in time, I'm like, what's the, okay, what are you calling in? Like, how are you feeling right now? How do you want to feel? Let's pick the herb based on that. And then I would like, we would like, you know, I, or I would find a new like herb that I wanted to play with. And I'd be like, okay, we're all going to like hang out with mother nettle today. And like, let's just see what she wants to say to us. And they're like, you know, and it's one of those things where it's like, when you like you said, you decide to open yourself up to this magic, you decide to experience it. And it's really just starts with bringing that intentionality and that energy into everything that you do. And, and, you know, starting to see how it shifts. And that's like, you mentioned in the beginning of your book, and you're, as you're kind of like going over, um, I guess I'm going to call it like some basic places to start you know, you mentioned about keeping a book of shadows and recording your spell and kind of knowing how you can tweak. And I'll never forget the first time I learned about what a book of shadows really was, right? Because, you know, in movies and stuff, we're like, oh, the book of shadows, like, <laughs> right? Yeah. It's like something you have to find that somebody else is or whatever, right? And it's yeah. like, no, if we think about like a book of shadows is you doing exactly that, like, right, that trial and error that you're talking about, writing something as simple as saying, like, today, while I was brushing my teeth, I said this mantra, right? And then in the evening or the next morning, writing down, how did, like, how did that affect the day? How did that go? Okay, today, I did this blessing over my food. How did that go? Right? And kind of being in this, like, how I think so much of witchcraft is also, you know, your own your own intuition and trialing and erroring with like creating your own spells right that's exactly right you know and it is it's similar to a kind of recipe book you know you might have an old recipe book and you cook all you know you love all the all the recipes in it but throughout as time starts to go on I mean I'm a big cook so I sort of like maybe this is more resonating for people who are into cooking you know but it's like as you go along you just keep looking through the, you know you'll make the soup and then the next time you might be like do you know what I'm going to put a little bit more of this in it next time or I'm not going to put this in it or you know I'm gonna um, try and make it like this it's like it's kind of the baseline of a spell book you know it's kind of giving you the basic kind of guidance of how to do everything but ultimately it's how you, you know you can you can change things and do things the way that the way that you like you know these yeah. rituals are there to just kind of like yeah create a frame and out an outline for you of how to how to do stuff yeah and I love that I mean I think with with all of your with all of your books but you know with big witch energy too it's like having these it's like gives you a jump off place and I think um in a lot of ways it can be like learning a language right? Where it's like the more that you see, okay, the way when I want to do a spell to access my voice, I'm noticing, okay, Semra uses this herb and she's using this color candle and we're doing, right? And so you kind of start learning and you start picking up on stuff and saying, all right, oh, I understand. I'm using the blue candle because that's the throat chakra or whatever it is, right? And you start to try to like the more that you learn the language, I think often through the help of other people's spells, then you start, you know, coming up with your own. And then you start building up that confidence to say, okay, well, I have this intention. Let me kind of gather from these different things and, and put this together. But I'm curious, where do you, and I know that you give, you give like instructions for kind of, and it is funny because I've always thought that, um, cookbooks and spell books are very similar. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And like, I actually have a cookbook that um, it's called Eat With Intention and it has recipes and also has mantras and a meditation next to it. 
And some of my best friends I've met because they've come up to me and have been like, I read your book and it's a spell book. And I'm like, we're friends now. <laughs> like, you got it, <laughs> right? <laughs> it, it just looks like a cookbook, but, yeah. but recipes are spells, right? Yeah. And it's yeah, very, no, absolutely. it's very similar. So you have kind of like a build your pantry section of the book. I'm going to call it right. As far as like build your, your witchcraft closet. So what would you say, what would be some, let's say someone listening today wants to buy like five things, like five kind of basic things to start them yeah. up. What would you say would be like a good, like first, you know, five or so. I love this question. I love this question. Okay, so I would say camphor would be something really great because that is just so cleansing and purifying. So have that as your base so that whatever else you're buying, you can give it a nice little cleanse with the camphor. Okay, then I would say we would have something for, um, okay, cloves, great for courage, brilliant for courage. And in spell work, you know, a lot of the time, especially in big witch energy, you know, it's like a lot of the things that we need spells for a lot of the time are things to help us give courage to kind of like go into a situation or, you know, so I'd say cloves are great. Um, time is brilliant, really helps clear your mind, get to your inner voice. Um, rosemary, brilliant for protection. Patchouli, but only use patchouli if you like the smell, right? Patchouli. <laughs> fantastic for magnetizing so anything that you want to call in anything that you want to bring a blessing like brilliant for abundance um let's say cinnamon brilliant for blessings good fortune happiness like you can make ones with cinnamon you know but it smells beautiful like very warm very loving um and yeah you know you've got the good fortune there as well and then you know, I mean, where have we got them? So if that's four, is it? Is that four? You can keep going. Go, give me a couple more. I, I, mean, I, I feel like, I feel like a lot of those no, herbs, the herbs, I feel like the herbs are easily accessible, you know? So you can oh yeah, I mean, these ones are all, you know, um, and then maybe rose, rose petals are always great for opening the heart, you know, for loving energy. You always want to send love in your spells. You know, all the spells that I do are really positive. So, you know, you want to kind of maybe have something for love, heart opening um if you want to do you know maybe have a little something in there for a bit of banishing too bit of black pepper bit of cayenne pepper always good to just kind of like <laughs> <laughs> I love this so okay so now you have these you have these tools does someone need to have their own you know cauldron or heat safe pot to burn these herbs or what could you use them in different ways I mean Okay, ideally, you're going to have a little cauldron, or you're going to have some kind of ceramic or iron or brass, like heat sensitive dish. I love burning herbs on hot coal, on hot charcoal. So that's my favorite way to, to make like an incense spell. But there are other ways that you can do it. So for instance, um, cinnamon, beautiful um, blessing spell. I might have even shared this one with you before, but it's like, you know, you, cinnamon, because it's just such a good fortune, blessing, like um, brings happiness and abundance. Um, you could, you just burn cinnamon sticks, you know, and a lovely way thing to do with cinnamon is to have two cinnamon sticks and then tie knots around them and make yourself a little wand. So one of the, everything in magic represents and corresponds for something. So if you're looking at it with this little cinnamon stick spell, one of the cinnamon sticks will represent you. The other one represents all of your blessings. And then you can tie them together. And then with each knot, count one of your blessings. And I would say, you know, go for 50 blessings because we're so blessed, you know. So everything, your hands that can tie the knots, your eyes, your sense of smell, the fact you can walk, your home, you know, like just your friends, yeah. your family, you know, everything. And then you'll make, you'd have made yourself a lovely little wand and you'd have bound all of your blessings to yourself in this spell. And this is something that you can burn um, and bless anything. You can bless your manifestations. You can open your front door, light it, let all the smoke travel into your house, welcome all the blessings into your home. And it smells beautiful as well, you know, and it is very much about the, the way that these scents can invoke, invoke feelings, you know, within us. 
and cinnamon is warm and grounding and you know and you kind of soak that smell in and you just recognize what that scent is going to be bringing to you I love that. I love that sound. That's such an easy, approachable one for, you know, anyone to start off with. Oh, um, yeah. So, so what about, let's talk a little bit about these banishing spells and yeah. where do you think that there, is there a line? Is there like a line of what one should and shouldn't use a spell for? That you've got to have ethics in spells, you know, and you've got to understand that you probably wouldn't want to do something to somebody else that you wouldn't want done to you, you know, and you've got to remember the threefold fold law. So, you know, you do something bad to somebody, you do, so, you know, you have to be prepared that that might come back to you, you know. Yeah. So if you really want to do something like that, you have to do it with the awareness that, it might come back which for me freaks me out and I just would yeah. never really do anything bad on anybody but you can can you know if something is really bothering you whether it's you know I, I would try to make all my magic spells center around me yeah. so that I'm never influencing anybody else so you know if say I did want to banish a person just put them in the freezer you know you can just write down their name three times put it in a bag of water uh, you know in a little ziploc bag or an ice cube tray put it in the freezer you've put them on ice you know oh, I love that and it's <laughs> so good yeah you want to flush something down the toilet flush it down the toilet see it go just enjoy the energy of seeing it release you know black, black peppercorns are great if you want to kind of you know if there's a situation that's an anno that's annoying you just smash them up smash them up because it's almost as much you know you're enjoying experiencing your release while yeah. you're doing and that is sending out an energy that's going to put you in a different energetic frequency. So if we're sort of thinking about a ritual wanting to change our, you know, we call it, we're harnessing energy when we're doing a ritual. And so if we're harnessing that energy, then that energy is going to be able to put us in different vibrational frequencies. So, you know, so if it is just kind of like releasing and being annoyed at something, you know, you can just smash up some black peppercorns. Yeah, I and love that. Yeah, and and also yeah, like the way that you were saying, it's like it's not about you don't need to do something that's going to necessarily harm the other person, but you can do stuff that's going to prevent them from yeah. you know maybe doing anything negative to you. So if there's someone in your life that's like you feel like constantly like antagonizing you or something like that, you know, putting them in the freezer or <laughs> something like that, it's like you're kind of just you know claiming your space without actually doing any harm to anything yeah that's exactly right exactly right you know it is just that physical moment of doing something sometimes and you know it is amazing how that kind of freezes but you know you know you just do these small little things and it can really have such a huge impact oh I remember now when I look back in my like or I don't know if you did any of this when you were younger but when I was, you know, in my teens and early 20s, I did so many things around boys. <laughs> no. <laughs> and I was like, now I'm like, ooh, a little dicey. But I used to remember how, like, I would be, I would feel like I was so energetically attached to a guy. And I was, like, waiting for him to text me or waiting for him to call me. And I was, like, couldn't stop thinking about him. And then I would do like a cord cutting thing. You know, I would do some like or an energetic, like clearing between us or whatnot. And it would always blow my mind how fast they would call because it was like, they felt that like them, they felt the loss of my energy. Yeah. And like, even though they were like, I didn't date any spiritual guys at that point, they were not like aware of what was going on or what I was doing. They felt that, they were like, oh, wow, like, I don't know. But on some level, it, they picked it up that I was no longer psychically attached or whatnot. Yeah. But Amazing. <laughs> it always works out like that, isn't it? I also find that sometimes when people put spells on guys, it almost binds them to them. And then that's what makes it difficult for them to kind of move on or, you know, check out anybody else or kind of be open to meeting anyone else because they've bound themselves to this person, you know, and the person might not be bound to them but they have bound themselves and that is yeah. when they get you know I see sometimes you know people get a little bit obsessed with people 
and it's because they have just kind of like they've they, and it's you've, you've got to be a little bit more open you know you can't um and and you have to really that is a common request you know for me uh and I and I you know I do always have to say it's like no because just imagine how you would feel if somebody did that to you it's not it's very unethical not cool <laughs> it's not cool and it's also you know in like in just also in manifesting in general it's like you're not allowing the space that there is a you know a higher plan or a higher power that might have a better idea you're saying like I know what's best and whether it is like I want that specific person or I want that specific job right it's like when we're manifesting I'm always like you don't get to manifest him you get to manifest the relationship that you want and if he's the 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 corresponding match to that he will show up and if he's not he won't and you'll know and then someone that is and vice versa even with like a specific like job position or something like that where you're like I need this specific role at this specific company um it's yeah, I would, I would not do a spell or manifest for that. I would instead say, okay, well, what is it about, if there's something about that specific job that you love, great. You're allowed to say, okay, I would love to have this kind of leadership position and work for this kind of company. And then if it's that thing, great. If not, right. Would you also like kind of block oh, people absolutely. from using specifics? Absolutely. I would say that, why don't you manifest the energy manifest the energy that you want to call in manifest how you want to be feeling in that situation if you're manifesting a relationship you're manifesting feeling safe that you're with somebody who's loyal that you know who matches your loyalty that you're with somebody who supports you who you know can meet you on an emotional level if you're doing you know exactly a job it's like you know how are you going to feel in this job what are the people going to be like who you work with you know, like what, how, how is your kind of like, you know, how are you going to be rewarded, you know, and, and then, you know, and then also the insurance policy in any spell is always this or better, you know, because we don't know how amazing things might be for us. We don't know, you know, we, we have no idea. And that's the, that's the trust of trusting the universe. That's the trust exercise, isn't it? I love the um, Terence McKenna quote, um, you know, have so much trust in the universe that you can just throw yourself back and you know that you're going to land in a bed of feathered cushions, you know, and it's like, and I love that because it's like that it takes and it makes life a bit more exciting as well. I don't want, I don't think that I have limited beliefs, but I'm sure that I do in some areas and the way that, you know, even if I think about how um, everything happened with my business, and I think about what I manifested, you know, and one of the things on my manifestation list always is that I wanted to spread cosmic vibes. <laughs> I love it. I want to heal the world with magic, right? And it's huge, it's big, but it's like, I see how it that, it, that manifestation plays out through the community that my business has created, which is a surprise for me. That isn't, that's a part of something that I wasn't really expecting, you know, but, um, but it's like and I recognize that I wasn't very you know I kind of was talking about the energy and what I wanted to put out there and how I wanted everybody to feel you know as an example you know but yeah always this or better because we don't know we don't know how big and how amazing things could be absolutely yeah no I agree with that completely and I love that that's kind of going into the spell work too because I think we think about that a lot with like our manifestation practice. And then I think something about, or at least this is what I've seen. I'm curious if you see this with your clients too, but I've seen this when friends and clients are then like, oh, tell me about like spell work or whatever. All of a sudden, sometimes a lot of that is forgotten <laughs> and they're like, well, it's a spell. So it has to be like super specific, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but in reality, I, I love what you're saying. It's like, it's really, you're doing the spell to embody the frequency that's going to call in and manifest whatever that desired outcome is. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You don't need to, you know, yes, of course, there are some things we might want to be specific on, but I just think the energy just feels like a more exciting, magical option, doesn't it? Absolutely. And, yeah. and like you said, opens up for the possibility. And I can, you know, looking back, and I think maybe anybody listening to this podcast can look back at at least one thing in their life that kind of manifested that was uh, magical and similarly like when I look back on my journey 
there were so many things that I could not have, I could not have tried to, you know, manifest or spell specifically <laughs> or whatnot, because I didn't even know it was the same thing. It was just like, I have this kind of guiding thing that I'm being led by and more magic happened than was even, you know, there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think that kind of surely that's the excitement of life as well that magic can be you know like all these unexpected things can happen all the time if we're you know if you sort of take it you know if you sort of actually think about it if, if we were all manifesting our specific things and then just these specific things were all happening it feels kind of boring <laughs> it is and you would get over it you would get pretty over it <laughs> and you're like oh well just I'm doing another spell for another you know million dollars or whatever yeah, it's like you know I mean well that one I might not complain so much about but you know but uh <laughs> What are, no, your, what, are your, what are your favorite spells to do? Do you have any like favorites or ones that you find yourself in your personal life or with your your friends doing more? Um, do you know what? I've got a money one that I always do on a new moon. Um, and there's another money one that I do on a full moon. And they're just little spells and they just keep me ticking along nicely. On a full moon, I um, I put my hands, I get some water hold the water up to the moonlight and this is actually just a wishing one although I do a few extra little bits to make it a money one but um but yeah you know you just get the get a bowl of water hold it up to the moonlight and you get the reflection of the moonlight in the water and that is beautiful firstly you know yeah you have this direct connection with the moon and then you enjoy this connection for as long as you like uh, you know, a few minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes. And then you put your hands in the water and you feel the energy. You can just feel the moon's energy and you just soak it up, make your wish. And then you hold your hands up to the moon and you just tell the moon whatever you want. And you just enjoy that connection and it charges you up, you know? like I mean, I'm a full moon woman. I love the full moon. I get very... Um, deeply offended when people have problems, you know, with feeling a little bit mad around the full top for me. <laughs> that just means you're connected to it if you're feeling it. And that is wild. That's amazing, isn't it? Like, yes. I, I, you know, and I, and I, I, I like to charge myself up. I know that I usually don't sleep on a full moon. I, my little ritual is making myself a little playlist, a full moon playlist, and I stay up late and I'll either clean the flat or I'll dance around and I'll, you know, like I'll kind of write out a little manifestation list and charge up the water. Um, so yeah, so that's always a really lovely one. Um, chamomile oil, I wipe all my doorways and all my stairs coming up to my flat with that. That always welcomes in good fortune. If ever I'm feeling like things are a little bit stuck or I need to just kind of like give everything a little bit, you know, I mean, very easy, you know, like there's a long term, a big one that I'm working on at the moment, but God, that's too long to explain what I'm doing there. But, you know, but it's, um, but I feel like it's just lovely little every, you know, like you were saying earlier, you know, it's just kind of like incorporating it into my life and knowing that there's just these little things that I can do. There's a, um, a self-love spell that I have that I've been using for a very long time. Like, probably I mean years now and um I have got I've always get whenever I do a ritual I get everybody to stir their intentions and bless their intentions and bless intentions for everyone else who might smell it at some point you know yeah yeah and um and there's you know it, obviously it goes down to a tiny bit and then I have to build it all up again but there's you know over a hundred women that have bled that have blessed this and ground that you know and blended this these herbs at some point and I made it with the intention to really just uh, lower the voice of your inner critic because we all have it, you know, we all have that inner critic. And it's such a beautiful ritual because it really does just kind of like, you know, when that voice is there, you just take yourself back to that moment that there's this spell that we've done and this ritual that we've created to just remind us why don't just, you know, invite in the kind voice, invite in the loving, you know, unconditional love supportive voice you know and um that's one of my favorite little blends I think that I've ever you know I love that because you answered another question that I had on my head 
um, about repeating spells. Because I was thinking sometimes when, when I'm thinking about manifesting or I'm talking about someone's manifesting, I always kind of use the analogy of like, if you ordered something on Amazon or whatnot, it's coming, right? So just like trust that it's coming. But I also love that you have this, like I think having your new moon and your full moon and kind of having these like anchor point rituals um, are just, you know, really helping you to, it really is, it's just about remembering your magic, remembering your connection, remembering your power and having that, it's not so much that it's coming from a place of like, I need to do this full moon ritual to keep the flow of abundance coming, right? It's more so I want to do this full moon ritual because it reminds me that like, I'm a conduit you know, for this, this much bigger, larger energy, and I'm connected to the moon, and I'm connected to the natural flow of abundance or whatnot. So what, how would you tell someone like, let's say, let's say, uh, what is it, whatever's the most, what's the most common thing someone asks you for a spell for? Is there like an overwhelming, it's probably like money or love, right? <laughs> money and love are the two biggest spells that everybody wants. <laughs> so money or love, Someone's like, I want to do a regular spell. Do you say, okay, you can do a spell once a month for this? Like, do you, do you set like quotins? Can somebody like repetitively be doing like a spell every week or what, what would become like healthy versus not healthy? <laughs> I think there is an element of doing a spell and then just you've done it. You've created the ritual. You've done it. You've planted the subconscious seed in your brain through the ritual that it's on its way. Put it, put it aside and just get on with your life because sometimes when you are in that kind of energy sometimes you know so much especially for love like you know that's the that's always the one that I see that kind of like I worry about you know it's like when you see it when people are doing it for love it's like almost like because you are manifesting it so hard you can meet somebody and they might your vision might be a little bit clouded you know you might have that falling in love with their potential because you just want to be in love or because they're, and I've done this. So I'm speaking from experience, you know, I did this with a, with an ex. Um, so it's like, so ju you just have to, cause they tick, they ticked everything on the list. They tick everything on the list. So you miss the things that they're not ticking, you know, or yeah. you, kind of like you dismiss the bad things because you're just acknowledging all the good things. Yeah. So cause you just want it so bad. Because you want it so bad. So it's very much about just like keeping it real, you know, and yeah. just, giving it and just you know because you have to with with you know with this stuff or you're going to set yourself you're going to go crazy you know yeah. so it's so yeah you, you create the ritual and I would suggest just leaving it to the side you know it's there then you know it's done and if you are doing something like that on a new moon you know and just before I say that something I wanted to say that I didn't want to forget is that you know I never want anybody to feel that because it's a new moon they have to do this or because it's a full moon, they have to do this. Never force magic, never force it. It's like, because then it's almost like, you know, when people have to force themselves to go to church every Sunday or something and they kind of resent it. That's not what magic is. Magic is about being in our power, doing everything in our energetic flow. Not, you know, like not working with resistance. So never feel like you have to. <laughs> I saw I saw that, I literally squealed when I saw that note in your book. <laughs> because I was so happy that you wrote that because I do think there's this like, you know, I mean, I live in LA, right? So we have like a huge moon culture, I guess, amongst the spiritual folks here. And there can be like frantic moon ritual. <laughs> where people are like, no, like I've had people tell me like, oh, because like sometimes I'll host, I'll invite people over or whatever um, to do like a ritual or, you know, make dinner and like pogo tarot or whatever we do. Yeah. And, um, and I just do it at the time that feels good. Right. And like probably the portal of like, you know, the surrounding two days of the moon, right. Whatever feels like it'll be good and flowy for me and my energy or whatnot. And I've had people be like, Oh, but you know, the moon is actually going to be the next night or the moon is actually the day before or whatever. Right. And I'm like, it's okay. Like, it's okay. It's in the portal. Like if you don't trust it, you could do it on the thing, but I think it's so true because what you, what we've all had that, I think most of us have probably had that feeling, right? Where we're like, oh, I should do it. Or I even have some of the, some of the spell books I have will say, well, 
you have to do this on a Friday because it's a Venus spell, right? And then you're like, oh, fuck, it's Friday, but I've had like a chaotic day and like shit's not going my way. And I'm like, I don't know if I want to put my love spell in this energy, you know? Yeah. And so I love that. It's like your energy is, is more important than, than any of it. Yes, exactly. And be in that, you know, you want to be in fully into it and in the moment when you're doing it, you don't want to be distracted. You don't want to be tired. Like, wait, wait until until the time is right, you know, and um, and just think that if you're doing something because you feel like you have to, that energy is not going to be is not going to be right, you know, and I mean, I think that sometimes it's that, I mean, I love a waxing moon. I love a waxing moon and I love a full moon, you know, because it's sort of like that time when everything's just taking off. And, you know, so just to go back to what you were saying, you know, about it being for markers, that's what's fantastic because you can set your intention on a new moon if you are working with the cycle, you know, and you can be like, right, this is what I, how I want things to go this month, you know, and then you can just keep checking in. And then if you are keeping a book of shadow, shadows or a little journal, you know, moon journal, you can then just be approaching the waxing moon and just be like, okay, what's happened? How's anything, you know, how's this manifested? Has anything moved? Do I need to do anything? Because you've got to be doing stuff as well. You can't just do a spell really and just sit on your bum and wait for it to happen. It's a collaboration, isn't it? You know, with the energy. And, um, and yes. I think, that, you know. Can we talk a little bit more about that? Can we talk a little bit more about that? About yeah, sure. <laughs> because I feel like, again, I don't know, maybe it's my like, the bias because of kind of the area I live in and and some of the energy here but I think there is and I this is one of the things I talk about a lot because it was one thing that I had to learn I yeah. was always I was always like magic manifesting all of that first yeah. and then for a very long time in my life I didn't know how I didn't do any of the earthly stuff because I was just so like, this is fun. This feels like me. I know how to do this. <laughs> this stuff, I don't know, but no. <laughs> um, and and I see that in a lot of people when they get into this kind of work and they start playing with it, it's almost like they forget that it is a co-creative effort and that, you know, so can you talk a little about like, give maybe an example or something of like, okay, if I do this kind of spell, then I also need to be taking certain earthly actions to be assisting the energy yeah I mean you know I guess there are people that might come to me who have been single for a long time and they I have to say he's not going to come and knock on the door you have to put yourself out there you know you have to kind of like put yourself out there or you know maybe sometimes on a list things can be a little bit too specific you know you can suddenly get a little bit too fussy maybe you know yeah. with the specifics um it's like you have to realize that there's give and take and we're living in this real world you know it's like people yeah. might when I, I do a money ritual um at my shop where people come and I had somebody asking me you know about the lottery spell and it's sort of like you know it just doesn't really work like that you know like it's like I, if I had the money spell to make me a millionaire and not work anymore I would have done it by now but it's <laughs> not it's about continuously being in the energy and being conscious and you know a manifestation almost is like maybe a little bit of a to-do list you know you're making this deal with the energetic deal with the universe of like okay this is what I want to be doing now and if the universe is seeing that this is what you want to be doing and you're just not really putting yourself out there and not really doing it then you're not you're, you're you know you're, the co-creation of your manifestation is not gonna it's it might happen but you know it, <laughs> you have to be because you want to be in that energetic frequency it's Absolutely. almost like you know if you're once you're in it you do the spell, you get in the energetic frequency, you're magnetic to stuff, but you have to keep it up, sort of like almost doing what you're doing to keep that, to keep in that, sort of like in that frequency, if that makes sense. Yeah. And I yeah. also think that sometimes, you know, when we, we do these spells or we do an intentional ritual, what we're also opening up the pathway for is for us to receive that guidance even more clearly, right? For it to be like, okay, I'm doing this ritual and I think it amplifies the directions that we're probably already getting on some level and ignoring or not hearing or however it may be. And then, you know, one of the things I've, 
I started doing for myself when I caught myself in this years ago was that after I do a spell, a ritual, even a visualization med- meditation, anything like that, where I'm kind of like putting that intention out there immediately afterwards, when I'm still in that like really juicy energy of it, I will open up my journal and write down, okay, God, angels, guides, divine support squad, what do I need to do? Right. And I just write down whatever comes through, like, what are the earthly actions that I need to take? Because now, and for me, one of the things I love about ritual and I love about spell work is that I feel like it's just a very tangible way that I feel like, okay, like the universe has this. So like, I know that like that side of things is rolling (laughs) and now, okay, now I can trust that that's rolling and like, what do I need to do along with it? Right. If, if that's kind of taken care of. Yeah. I mean, and then what I was going to say, the other brilliant thing that you can do is, you know, waxing moon, full moon, you know, you can look up at the moon and you can say, I usually say to do this on a waxing moon and then wait and see what happens on the full moon, but look up and say, go on, show me what I need to see. Show mm. me what I need to see. And it's, you don't leave the question. You don't do anything. It's, it's scary to do that. That is something that I don't always have the guts to do. <laughs> but, you know, it, it, what needs to be seen will be shown to you if you really, you know, trust. And you say, go on, show me. Show me what I need to see, you know. Yeah. And if you're, you know, uh, if you work with that from the new moon and then you sort of like, you know, you've been journaling, you've been doing all this stuff, you get to the waxing moon, you're like, all right, on the full moon, I want you to show me. That's scary because, but you have to be prepared. And if you're prepared and open, that moonlight is going to shine on those shadows that's holding you back or stopping you, stopping this. Why isn't moon? Tell me why this manifestation isn't happening. Tell me what I need to see. You'll get to see it, but you, you know, you have to be open and be willing to kind of have that energy exchange. But if you do, it will guide you. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And that's, I love that you brought brought up the cloves earlier, right? Because it's like so much of this work has to do with us having that courage, that courage to actually look at it. And so often it's like, that's the first, that's like the first thing that sabotages us, right? Is that we're like, oh, we're nervous to even do the spell or we're nervous to even like look at the moon or open ourselves up to to any of it um I love that oh so many things okay so let's talk a little bit about your new book yes multiple books but your newest book is called big witch energy and um (laughs) it's funny because the actual subtitle is power spells for modern witches but I almost said power spells to take down the patriarchy (laughs) which is not (laughs) <laughs> not the official subtitle but um but yes some of these could so what are some of your favorite what is are there some of your favorite spells from this new book um I think that one of my favorite books is one of my favorite spells <laughs> is you know all about kind of like just rethinking and rebirthing all the patriarchal conditioning that you've had and having a commitment ceremony with yourself, you know, to just kind of be like, why do I talk to myself in this way? Why do I look at myself in this way? Why do I compare myself in this way? Why do I minimize my voice in this way? Why do I worry that if I speak up, I'm going to be called difficult, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You get the gist, you know? And, um, and I think that it's not so much, you know, the ritual for me with that is just the recognition It's the recognition of the way that a lot of women that I know live our lives, a lot of witches that I know live our lives, you know, under this kind of like conditioning that we just are kind of complacent with really, because we have been living it for generations and generations, you know, um, going right back 500 years ago to the middle ages, to when the witch trials were happening, you know, these women, I, I, you know, I say women, I know that there was a small amount of men in there, but, you know, I feel like I'm, you know, the witch energy, the witch archetype, you know, it is this kind of like um, energy of women connecting to it because of the persecution, whether we know it in this lifetime or not, you know, I think that a lot of women do feel this persecution and we 
subconsciously, consciously connect to what happened to all these women 500 years ago. You know, the women who were oh, yeah. um, you know, accused of witchcraft were women who lived on the edges of the patriarchal society, you know, and I think that recognizing that as a even as a woman 500 years later if we do things that aren't you know kind of like this said and done thing of the way a woman should behave we are persecuted for it in one way or another in this lifetime you know we might not be um you know uh tortured you know yeah. and executed, but um we are we definitely experience that so I feel like just having that kind of recognition with the ritual is something that puts you in a position of power because you recognize it and you start to just notice little different things about the way that maybe you're behaving and, you know, and, 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 and noticing the way your friend, you know, other women are talking about themselves or, you know, and stuff like that. And that's how we can hopefully make small changes. Oh, absolutely. I love that. And I think I just, um, one of the books that I love that you may have already read is called the heroine's journey. And oh. Oh, well, you'll love it. And if you're interested in this, anybody listening to this, you'll you'll probably love it if you want to try to unfurl the patriarchy within you. Um, and it just, it really talks about just kind of like we've we've heard about um, Joseph Campbell's The Hero's Journey, but the heroine's journey is really like a woman's journey into her power and how so many of us, you know, have, you know, have become what what she calls like father's daughter's where parts of us and we, because of the society and how everything we grew up in, we disowned the the feminine and we disowned the mother in different ways in here because the, the feminine was made to look weak and complacent and, you know, all this stuff and then have kind of like rebelled against it in the opposite direction and become, you know, uh, in essentially like very hyper masculine, right? And that trying to essentially be men right? Because that's how society will reward us if we earn and succeed and have, you know, validation and stuff. And I think, you know, we're now coming into uh, an age and a time where I think, you know, we have more women than ever that are wanting to do this work, that are wanting to unravel this, like within themselves and really see. And like, the more I've learned about it, the more insidious I've learned that it really is in so, so many of us and just unconsciously. And it's not, it's not our fault. It's not our fault. It's not our mother's fault. It's not our grandmother's fault. Um, this is just the, the kind of like the air we've been breathing. Right. It's, a, it's like a survival te- tactic, you know? And I often think that it's like, when we say, have these conversations about, um, you know, why aren't women, you know, women in power, if women are in power, you know, God knows who, you know, how, who knows what the world would be like. And then there's this, you know, the argument to that always is, well, there are women who are in power, but what happens is these women who sort of like end up in these powerful positions, they have to play the game like men to be there because they have to be one of the boys. They can't operate as a true woman yep. in these, in the, you know, in these kind of situations. And, uh, and that's why you never really got to get to experience what it would be like if women run the world okay. absolutely and that's why I think you're also finding so many more women wanting to start their own businesses right because uh, to climb the corporate ladder right now with how it's structured you have to you know step into or even the political ladder you know when uh when we had Hillary Clinton up right for um a candidate for presidency you know, in a lot of ways, of course, you know, a ton of us wanted her to win, to have a woman in the White House, right? But there was also that element, like you were saying, that even if she did win, she was a woman that, you know, played the boys game to get there, right? Which, again, how can you falter for, right? Like, you can't, like, this is kind of what we're all up against. But now it's like, I think it's so beautiful, um, that spell and a lot of the other spells in here that, are really about like having courage and sharing your voice and not being influenced by what's, you know, I forgot the exact wording of it, but kind of like what other people think of you essentially or other people's opinions, right? And so many of the spells in here, what you talked about where it's like, we can use this magic for us to 
more fully step into our power and the women that we want to be. And when we do that, whatever else we want to happen can happen, right? Because it's like the the actual work, right, is doing this stuff, is looking at what's going on in us, is looking and saying, okay, well, if I'm, you know, maybe what's stopping me from fully, whatever, starting the thing I love or doing after the thing is actually, I actually just, I need to do courage. I need to gain more courage, right? I need to stop worrying about what people think about me. I need to be more confident in sharing my voice. And I love how that so many of the the spells in here are really there to help you harness these things within you. Yeah, absolutely. To kind of, you know, really call in your personal power and you know, I think that's the play on words, you know, big witch energy, let be well endowed in magic, you know, like. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. Well, I think that is, it's like, that is what, I mean, that's what I, you know, I feel big witch energy is, is like, I've got the power, I've got the magic and like really, you know, going back to even um, like what you're talking about with the the simple rituals you do around the moons, right? It's like, this is, it's just to remind you, right? It's part of it is reminding, like, I feel like it's whenever I'm going an extended period of time and I haven't done a spell or I haven't done a ritual, I can, I literally feel it, Mm -hmm. right? And a second I do it, it's like a coming home (laughs) and it's like, oh, okay, this is who I am. Okay. Okay. I'm back. Right. And uh, <laughs> giving yourself that space, you know, it's just that time, like giving yourself just this beautiful moment to just kind of really be in touch with yourself and really get clear on how you're feeling, how you want to feel, you know, and that's beautiful. It just, it puts you on the path, doesn't it? On the right path. And life is full of distractions and shit that's happening all the time, you know, that's chucked to and, us. And it's but always going to be. Right. Yeah, and it always been, that's life that's life life is what is it it's like you know filled with happy times sad times boring times exciting times heartbreaking times that's the beauty of it you know it's yep. it, all of it it's all encompassing life you know yeah. but yeah ritual is just giving yourself this beautiful moment and yeah it's 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 a wonderful thing to be able to do for yourself to give yourself that time yes Exactly. And I think it is, it's like such a deeply, what, no matter what ritual or spell you do, just taking the time to do one is a self-loving practice, is a self-honoring practice. Um, oh, thank you so much. I feel like we've gotten so over. I like totally lost track of time, but thank you so much for being with us, Samra. I'm going to put all the links below so people can get your book. So I highly recommend if you happen to be in London and you have the ability to do an in-person session with her is absolutely phenomenal. It's such a treat. Um, I'll put your website and your Instagram and I think they can, they can order older stuff off your website, right? Too. Everything's on the website. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Any, any parting words that you want to share with any? Thank you so much for having me. And that is one of the, one of the biggest things that I have gratitude for since I did this is all the amazing people that I meet. Like, it's just that is just so amazing it's such a gift for me you know I've just met so many amazing people so lovely to meet you um and thank you so much for for having me on and yeah if anybody's struggling to know what magic is just look up at the sky just look up at the sky and think about just think about the miracle of you being here and what it took for you to get here and how nuts that is, you know, and, um, and, and if that doesn't make you feel, you know, allow that to fill your body with, you know, the magical feeling of gratitude and love and, <laughs> and all yeah, that. For sure. I mean, I think nature, like you were mentoring, I think nature, looking at the moon for sure, for me, sometimes it's just sitting and looking at the ocean, you know, mm-hmm. and seeing like the endlessness of the waves and just being like, this is just, yeah, that's just wow. magic. Yeah, yeah, it's just wow, it's awe inspiring. It's so much really? bigger than we could even fathom. Oh, yeah. It I really love is. It. Well, <laughs> thank you so much for being with us. It was a pleasure to meet you. And thank you so much for coming on the podcast. And thank you to everyone listening. I hope you all follow Samra and check her out and have fun doing your big witch energy spells. And if you do any and you want to post about it, I would love it if you tagged me as well as her because I want to see what spells you're doing.